question from Craig. I am 48 and working through a session of Easy Strength for Fat Loss via your book. I enjoy your humor and your approach makes living healthier feel achievable. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I think you have to have a sense of humor about life because uh, as our good friend Rocky taught us, life, it's going to knock you down. When doing any squat exercise, how far should a, push, a person drop their butt down to execute proper form? Are there different depths I should aim for with the various squat exercises? There, it's interesting. I've never had that question before. Um, one of the things about the goblet squat, when I go around and teach it, the concept of the goblet squat, which I invented, and that's true, is the original idea was that you would take your right elbow and push your right knee out, take your left elbow and push your left knee, knee out, and then just wedge yourself underneath, try to stay vertical. You got the horns of the, of the, of the bell here. You got the bell, uh, you've got the bell, part of the bell here. And you would sit there and then of course maybe do some curls or whatever, and you'd be tall and you let your legs naturally sink down. I liked it. When I see that, most people can get oddly deeper doing that because the counterweight of the bell seems to allow you to drop through your hips a little bit more. Um, <laughs> I was talking not long ago about my best clean and jerk of my life. And when the weight hit me on the chest, it just drove me to the ground. And it's the deepest squat I've ever done. But it was deep because the load on that clean and jerk was so heavy. Uh, I like what you're saying here, Craig, because, you know, I see a lot of people do back squats in real life and then online, and I think most people don't back, back squat deep enough. But having said that, because of where the load is, a lot of people get those weird little back movements because in many cases, that's just the way they're designed. And some of those issues people have with back squats are hard to fix. You'll notice when people slide over to front squats with that more vertical stance, um, you don't see as much issues with the lower back and the hip area doing odd things. And of course, if you do the overhead squat, uh, that's when you get really exposed in your uh, upper body mobility, your shoulder mobility, your T-spine mobility. Obviously, front squats expose your wrist, elbow, and general shoulder flexibility more, but overhead squats really stress it. So, what I like about your question, Craig, is that you seem to understand that we're going to have some variance between that movement and this movement when it comes to being on the platform or being in the gym. And that, that's true. Um, personally, let's go through a little, little, let's go, let's go through it just like we went there. I think with the gobble squat, most people can go pretty deep. I think with the double kettlebell front squat, I think most people can go pretty deep. When you move to the barbell front squat, um, that's when the wrist injury, uh, injuries, the wrist issues start to show up. And a lot of people will start to shallow up a little bit, but generally most people still front squat deeper than, than they back squat. With the overhead squat, uh, you know, you're, if you can do them, you, you should be about your front squat depth. That's why I do think the Zercher squat has such value. Uh, that's where you hold the, the, the bell and the, the crooks of your elbow. Um, it is really the same idea as goblet squats. And some people can go really deep on Zercher squats. Then it comes to the back squat. And now we get into all the controversies. Uh, if you want to get power lifters angry at each other, show another federation's back squats. And they'll all get into a fight about what is an actual back squat? I've watched some people back squat at meets uh, online and they get all three white lights and it looks more like a, a, an eighth squat to me. So the reason I, I went down that road a little bit there and I think it's important is that a lot of people will back squat shallow. Not many people will gobble squat shallow. So it, a lot of it, can be fixed, Craig, just by changing the exercise selection. For most people, most of the time, I think the goblet squat is all you need. If you want to challenge, do that, that where I use the broomstick or the PVC pipe and do that goblet squat to overhead squat drill. You can just Google that or just search it here at YouTube. And there's a video of me doing it <laughs> poorly. 
Um, but the really double kettlebell front squats is a good way to build mass and uh, all kinds of other qualities. Um, the barbell front squat, I think, is probably the best athlete builder overall. And then it's, and then as you advance, I would add overhead squats. The Zercher squat is a great way. I mean, if you can handle the bar in your in your elbows, it's a great way to squat. And then there's the back squat where depth always is a question. So I hope that was worth the time. Thank you, uh, Craig. And that was a good question.